Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror comedy movie called The Dead Don't Die. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens in a small town called Centerville, where we see two police officers, Cliff and Ronnie. They respond to a call from a local farmer, Frank, who claims that his chicken has been stolen. Frank assumes that it must be Hermit Bob, who lives deep in the forest. As a result, the cops head to the forest to find Hermit Bob and question him. Soon after, they discover a freshly skinned rabbit and a recently extinguished campfire in the woods. Cliff notices Hermit Bob hiding in the bushes and asks where the chicken is. However, the latter doesn't respond and suddenly shoots at the cops. This agitates Ronnie, but Cliff doesn't want to escalate things further. He simply gives Hermit Bob a warning and leaves from there. Later in the police car, Ronnie questions why they didn't arrest Hermit Bob, considering he fired at the police. Cliff responds that he has known that man since junior high, which was 50 years ago. Even though Hermit Bob is eccentric, he is unlikely to harm anyone or steal livestock. Furthermore, Cliff doesn't like Frank, and the report of the chicken theft seems questionable to him. The cops then look at their watch and realize it's already 8 p.m., but it's still bright outside. At this moment, they receive a call from another officer, Mindy, who reports strange phenomena happening in town. Ronnie tries to inquire more, but the communication is abruptly disconnected. He tries to call her from his phone, but strangely, the lines are also dead. The scene then cuts to the only diner in the small town, where Frank complains to another man named Hank about his stolen chicken. When the latter asks how he knows the thief is Hermit Bob, Frank replies that no one else could have done it. They then listen to a news report on the radio, which states that hydraulic fracturing work in the polar regions might be shifting the axis of rotation, causing daylight hours to be affected. However, the government assures that fracking has done no significant harm to the environment and that there is no reason to be worried. In the next scene, we see a juvenile detention center where three children are watching television news about recent ecological changes. A boy named Geronimo says that polar fracking can alter the Earth's rotation, which could result in complete planetary destruction. The two other girls are frightened by this and worry about what's going to happen to them. But just then, the guard arrives and scolds Geronimo for being in the girls' quarters. We are then taken to a gas station where a nerdy man named Bobby learns about the crisis from the radio. Moments later, a delivery man visits him and gives him a rare comic book as a gift, which makes Bobby very happy. The guy then proceeds to leave, but Bobby stops him and asks for some words of wisdom. The delivery man responds that the world is perfect and one should appreciate the details. He then leaves leaves, and Bobby is left reflecting on his words. Meanwhile, in the forest, Hermit Bob notices something strange. The ants are running around in a disorganized manner, and he sees mushrooms growing in places where they shouldn't naturally grow. In another scene, a motel owner named Danny learns from the news that several pets have gone missing. Some of the pets eventually returned, but their behavior has become strange and aggressive. This worries Danny, and he immediately starts looking for his cats, but he doesn't find them anywhere. Meanwhile, Frank walks out into the garden to look for his pet dog. He eventually finds it underneath a car and calls it inside. Strangely, the dog ignores him and begins running away in the opposite direction. Frank becomes irritated, but soon realizes that not only is his dog missing, but so are all of the farm's cows. Meanwhile, Hermit Bob, who is looking at the farm through binoculars from a treetop, notices the cows heading into the woods. At the police station, Ronnie, Mindy, and Cliff discuss the bizarre events happening in Centerville. We also find out that a dead person has been brought in to be kept over night at the station. Ronnie and Mindy ask when the coroner will arrive because they don't want to be on duty with a corpse. Cliff reveals that the coroner is due to arrive tomorrow and that he's on duty tonight. Upon hearing this, the other two are relieved and decide to call it a day and go home. The scene then shifts to the diner where the owner and the waitress gossip about their town's new funeral undertaker, Zelda. It turns out the waitress cleans at the funeral home, so the owner asks her what Zelda is like. The waitress reveals that she's generous but has creepy eyes that seem to stare into your heart. She also mentions that Zelda has built a secret Japanese-style room at the back of the funeral home, where she keeps a golden Buddha statue and a samurai sword. Elsewhere, we see Zelda swinging a katana in front of the Buddha statue. She then returns to the morgue room, where she briefly notices a corpse moving. However, she thinks it's just an illusion and leaves. Later that night, the moon suddenly turns purple, and two corpses rise from their graves. They head straight for the diner, where the waitress and owner are cleaning up. The women are horrified 
horrified when they see the zombies, but before they can react, they are attacked and brutally devoured. Afterward, the zombies notice a coffee pot on the counter. They mutter, coffee, repeatedly, and proceed to drink it. They then smash the pot on the ground before leaving the diner. The next morning, Cliff is woken up by a call from Hank, who urgently summons him to the diner. Upon his arrival, Cliff is horrified to see the mutilated remains of the two women. Ronnie and Mindy also arrive shortly after, and they are equally horrified. Their bodies are brutally ripped apart, so they all assume it must be the work of a wild animal. Elsewhere, we see a teenage girl named Zoe and her two male friends passing through Centerville. They try to check the map on their phones, but cannot get a signal, so they continue driving down the road. Soon after, they come across Bobby's gas station and stop to refuel. Since it's getting dark soon, they decide to spend the night in town and inquire about the accommodation options. Bobby says there's only one motel here, which is owned by Danny. He then gives them the address, and the teenagers proceed towards the same. Meanwhile, Cliff and Ronnie go around town informing people about the dangerous events that are taking place. They soon arrive at the motel and discuss the situation with Danny, who is equally shocked. Moments later, Zoe's group shows up and checks into the motel. Zoe asks if there's any diner nearby, but Cliff reveals that the only one in town is now closed. The cops also don't reveal the entire truth, as they don't want to scare away the visitors. They simply warn them not to go out after dark, but the teenagers don't take him seriously. Later, at the juvenile detention center, the three kids look outside the window and notice the gloomy environment. They then talk about the diner murders, and Geronimo believes that they are in the midst of a zombie apocalypse caused by polar fracking. This startles his friends, but before he can explain more, he's once again kicked out for being in the girls' floor. On the other hand, Cliff and Ronnie visit the town cemetery and discover two graves that have been unearthed. This finally makes them realize that the dead have risen from their graves and are causing havoc. They immediately get in the car and drive around town, warning everyone to be on the lookout for zombies. Along the way, Cliff wonders how to kill the undead, to which Ronnie responds that the only way is to decapitate them. Elsewhere, we see Bobby and Hank at the latter's hardware store discussing the same situation. They are convinced that it's a zombie apocalypse, so they prepare to barricade the store and arm themselves with all kinds of weapons. Meanwhile, at the motel, Zoe and her friends watch the news about gruesome murders taking place in various locations, where the victims appear to have been ripped apart by a wild animal. This scares them, and they start to believe that maybe the cop was correct. Hence, they immediately lock the door to protect themselves. As night falls, several zombies rise from their graves yet again. We later see Danny venturing outside the motel in search of his cats. He doesn't find them, but a zombie suddenly appears from behind and attacks him. At the police station, the three officers are preparing various weapons to kill the zombies. Soon after, they notice the dead woman waking up and approaching them while repeatedly mumbling, Chardonnay. The cops shoot her, but it doesn't seem to have any effect. Fortunately, Ronnie gathers his courage and decapitates her in a single strike. Next, we see Zelda applying makeup to two corpses at the funeral parlor. A few moments later, she notices one of the corpses has opened its eyes. She quickly closes them, only to see the other corpse doing the same. Both bodies soon regain consciousness and sit up. Zelda realizes what's going on, but she remains surprisingly calm. She then draws her katana and decapitates them, complaining that all of her makeup went to waste. Later, Frank is at home when he notices some unusual noises coming from outside. When he looks out his door, he sees a zombie approaching to attack him. However, the man quickly grabs his gun and shoots at the zombie, blowing its head off. In the following scene, we see that the town is overrun with zombies, mumbling words like Snickers, Juice, Wi-Fi, Joe Rogan, Bluetooth, and Siri. It turns out they're gravitating towards their favorite things from when they were alive. They immediately attack the hardware store, where Hank and Bobby have locked themselves. The zombies manage to get inside, but the two men react bravely and end up decapitating all of them. Elsewhere, the juvenile detention center is also being attacked, so the kids decide to hide in a closet for protection. Later, we see the three officers staring helplessly out the window as zombies roam the town. Mindy starts crying and asks the other two for reassurance, so Cliff comforts her, saying everything will be fine. Soon after, they notice Zelda approaching the station while easily decapitating many zombies on the way. The cops let her inside, and Zelda inquires about their plan. The officers have no idea, so Zelda suggests that they patrol outside and save as many people as possible. She offers to monitor the station for a while and suggests that they meet in the cemetery afterward. Though the officers are scared to go outside, they reluctantly agree 
and leave. After this, the three officers begin driving all over town, searching for survivors and killing zombies along the way. They eventually arrive at the motel, where they find Zoe's group lying dead, their bodies ripped open. Ronnie then cuts off their heads to prevent them from turning into zombies, which horrifies Mindy. Back at the station, Zelda is seen typing something on the computer, as if she's sending a secret message to someone. Next, we see Hank and Bobby at the hardware store, alive and doing relatively well. They barricade the front door strongly and breathe a sigh of relief, but to their horror, they realize that they have left the back door vulnerable, a redneck's worst nightmare. The zombies soon break through it and get inside in large numbers. The two men are unable to fight off such a massive horde, so they accept their fate and are eventually killed. Meanwhile, at the detention center, the zombies finally leave, so the three kids come out of the closet and escape. Elsewhere, at Frank's home, we see him getting attacked by zombies as he screams in agony. In the next scene, the three officers arrive at the cemetery, where their vehicle is surrounded by a horde of zombies. They attempt to drive forward, but one of the zombies becomes stuck in the wheel, preventing them from moving. Mindy can't take it any longer, so she begins crying at the top of her lungs. Shortly afterwards, she is approached by her grandmother, Zombie, who calls her name. This prompts Mindy to reach her breaking point, and she exits the vehicle to join her grandmother. She is then immediately attacked and becomes zombie food. Later, Zelda is seen driving towards the cemetery, skillfully killing zombies along the way. She soon encounters a female zombie wearing stylish clothes. It gives a nice pose and mutters, fashion. But Zelda decapitates her as well. Meanwhile, the three kids from the detention center witness this and are horrified. They approach the zombie's head, and one of the girls tells her friends to follow her, claiming she knows a safe place to hide. Shortly after, Zelda arrives at the cemetery, and suddenly, all the zombies run away from the police vehicle. They then notice a UFO appear in the sky, which excites them. Zelda is also relieved, as it seems she has been waiting for this moment. Moments later, the UFO suddenly picks her up and takes off from there. Upon seeing this, the officers are utterly shocked and can't understand what's happening. Cliff then remarks that he always thought Zelda was weird. The officers decide they've had enough of being powerless and finally get out of the vehicle. Cliff grabs a shotgun and Ronnie picks up a machete, charging into the horde of zombies. They skillfully manage to kill many of them, including their own friends. Bobby, Frank, Danny, Hank, and even Mindy. During this, Hermit Bob observes them from the woods and laments how terrible the world has become. As the movie ends, the two officers eventually run out of strength and are killed by the zombies. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.